Number three here, I want to look at the price elasticity of supply. And for the price elasticity of supply, which I'll refer to as E subscript S, we're going to see largely a, a similar discussion to what we had um, before here. Now we're seeing that I'm looking at a percentage change in the quantity supplied over the percentage change in the price of the product. I'm still looking at the responsiveness or sensitivity, so that hasn't changed. But now, instead of looking at it from the consumer standpoint, I'm looking at it from the uh, producer's standpoint. So, um, much of the same discussion um, can be had here. Um, elastic, that would be when the elasticity is greater than 1. Inelastic would be when the elasticity supply is greater than zero but less than one. As we know from the law of supply, um, is that the elasticity of supply will be always positive. Now, um, as we start to think about um, how this then exists, uh, along the curve, same kind of discussion here. The middle point will be one where I have um, it equal to one. Um, that would mean that there would be a one percentage change in the um, quantity supplied for a one percentage change um, in the price. So that shouldn't be um, too surprising. Then uh, what we would see is that on the upper portion of the curve that um, here that the um, elasticity of supply tends to um, tends to increase. So here the elasticity of supply would be greater than 1. And over here um, it would be greater than 0, but the elasticity of supply would be less than 1. <coughs> so um, what this also means though too is that we can uh, change this so that we could talk about how it exists um, um, if the curves cross each other, because again, if curves cross each other, we can get a sense of their um, elasticity with respect to each other. So now we would be able to say that for P, <coughs> that supply curve 1 is steeper then S2, S1, um, in this case, um, is going to be, is, is going to tend to be a little bit more inelastic. Now we can also have these extreme cases. In the extreme cases, this would be perfectly elastic supply this would be perfectly inelastic supply and again what we're trying to calculate here is a little bit of a discussion of you know what's going on in terms of um, you know, what's going on in terms of its, um, how sensitive the producer um, really is to um, what they're producing. Now, in terms of what determines this for um, a firm, um, the determinants are kind of the same thing, right? It could, um, the determinants 
of the elasticity of supply are going to relate back to what kind of contracts do the, does the producer have with other firms? The longer those contracts, then um, if those contracts are really long term, then they're going to be largely insensitive um, to those changes or inelastic. Um, the ability to alter production scale if they have no ability to alter how much is being produced then again they will be insensitive mm, is it unionized right if they are unionized they will also tend to be insensitive or inelastic. <coughs> and just as we saw for the price elasticity of demand, you would calculate it rather similarly for the price elasticity of supply, where you're calculating the percentage changes, except now I'm always dealing with a positive number. <coughs>